Hi there and welcome to a new episode of the Studio Project. My name is Wim Winters and this episode is a fourth in a row we do about of on the Studio A80 tape recorder which is here next to me and it's actually recording this episode um, that we brought back from Switzerland after a complete refurbishment by Andreas Kuhn, uh, uh, Studio Analog Audio. And together with that, as mentioned in the previous episodes, we brought back our mixing console 269, which is partly refurbished. This was owned by the uh, uh, Belgium National Broadcasting Radio Station and was used heavily used and altered and changed. So we decided to do, do the refurbishment of the 12 channels. We'll have a look on that in a minute and I will show you also the parts that came out of the Studio A80 tape, tape recorder and the mixing console. So come on over and have a close look at this wonderful mixing console. So here you have a short view on the Studio Mixing Console 269, a machine that was developed in the 70s and I think they produced it to the early 80s. I'm not sure about that, but I think it's something like that. And then this was replaced by later ones. And this is from the family actually of the same family of machines as the Studio A80, they have all the same kind of circuitry, which is quite impressive to see later, later devices, also the tape recorders, they have much smaller elements in the circuitry, so they produce less noise. Having this circuitry of that, that age and that time gives, of course, a special sound that is not replaceable by any other device. So, if you're really looking for that sound, this is a great machine. This machine, used by the Belgian Broadcasting Radio Station, was quite heavily changed, as uh, Andreas told me, in, in, in this section. They, and of course also in these, these sections, but um, we decided not to touch there. Also not to do the complete restoration of the bridge, which is actually a wonderful tool for recording, obviously. I like these, these, these meter bridges, with, it is a dB meter. But the left uh, master channel here is out of function. So it's only one channel that's working. But as I told you in the last episode, we do the measurements for feeding the tape with the plasma reader. So to give you an idea, we didn't do that last time. What came out of both machines, the tape recorder and this mixing console, so we did a complete refurbishment of the 12 channels, of which we are using now one. So the mixing console is used for this recording. One channel feed to a stereo uh, channel, so um, recorded by the Studio 80, just one microphone. And let's see if you can see that. I will focus on this bottle. It was used for sugar, but now it's used for this, these pieces. So it's it's a lot of, of material that came out. Also the original buttons for the Studio A80. So a lot of material that came out of, uh, of these machines. See if I can put it like this. Yeah, it's very, very, very solid. So originally this mixing console was produced by Studer for um, live broadcasting for, for television, if I'm informed correctly. And later on they were, they were used for uh, music recordings as well, also for studio work. They were not very famous for their mixing consoles, more for the tape recorders. But all that I can read and all people that I I've talked with that worked or still work with these mixing consoles, they all say the same, they sound great. They have the same circuitry, as I told you, uh, of, as the as the eight, 80s or the same family. If you proceed to the 80s, the noise that the circuitry produces from the later machines is supposedly to be less than of these machines that were mainly produced and designed in the 70s. But that is something that gives uh, these machines their sound. and. As we did some experiments, and we'll do more in the MIT Studio A80 in the future, I am not aware of too much of noise production. So, um, obviously on the back of this uh, Studio, you have the uh, connections and they're all great. It is a very heavy machine, it's about 30 to 35 kilos, so it's not something you take uh, with you just alone, yeah, you can carry it, you just dismantle this bridge. This bridge is very simple, but then you have to disconnect, disconnect it and it, it won't work anymore, I think. And it just fits on the back and then you can carry it with the, with the big handle. So, not too much details on this uh, Studer mixing console yet. 
will do more in the future if, when we are working with these machines. Uh, it's just um, as the Studio A80 last time was a very symbolic moment, this is a kind of symbolic moment because that's the first time actually that the mixing console and the Studio A80 are working together. So the uh, tape recorder is recording this and I will put the analog recording through the benchmark to the computer, otherwise you won't be able to hear it. So that was the Studio Mixing Console 269, a wonderful machine that can be a wonderful uh, element in our studio project. And as things are proceeding now, and we're talking in October 2015, in case you would see these videos later, we'll have a meeting with our architect in the midst of November. He did all the pre-investigations on regulations and on administrative things. So we'll have an intense meeting on that. What is possible, what's not possible, and how we're going to proceed. After that, it's decision-making moment. Um, and the first phase of the studio project will be the, the construction of the actual, the preparing of the building, restoration of the building as well. Um, second phase obviously will be the uh, building of the actual studio. And then within this second phase, you can have other subdivisions, but that's something for later. But what we want to do is to make a preliminary study obviously about the barn, the restoration, what's the necessities for the roof, the requirements for that, and Philip Newell will provide us all information that has to be worked on by our architect. But before we start with building this uh, of construct, the outside of the studio, do the restoration of the barn, we would uh, like very much to have a kind of calculation, worst case, best case scenarios in order to see that whether after the building actually has been done, has been ex executed, that the costs of the actual, actual studio will not exceed over a kind of limit that we has put for ourselves. So it's a difficult task, certainly for Philip Newell, to calculate things that are developing during a period of construction, as this project definitely will develop. But um, we cannot jump just in the deep water without knowing how deep the ocean will be. So that's all coming up and I will keep you updated about that. So thank you for watching and thank you for uh, subscribing to these videos and sharing that with your friends. And next week, so first week of November, I will be on holiday. That will be my first week since several years that I will decided to do nothing and my children actually um, very strongly emphasize the fact that they really would like me to do nothing at all. Last uh, vacations or holidays, I always took work with me. So that, that will be a very relaxing period. I don't know if I have time to make a studio project video for the, 12, for the 7th of November, but if not, don't worry, we will be back the 17th of November 2015. Thanks for watching again and see you later. Bye.